Hello everyone, I'm Brad and welcome to Mediocre Models. Um, for this one I'm going to paint some US Infantry. Um, I've got two models here because I'm going to do sort of two different styles for their pants at least. Um, if you look up US Infantry on the internet you can find all sorts of different outfits for all of them. You can do green or brown jackets. Um, but I like the, the sandy coloured look for these jackets at least. Um, and with these two models I've got one with the camo netting on his helmet and one with just a bare steel helmet. Um, as you can see he's got the bare steel helmet uh, and he's got his little cap on. And this one has the one obviously with the camo netting on. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to paint the different parts um, so this is what they should look like when they're finished and fully based um, so yeah uh, for the paints I've got undercoated in Corax white as per usual um, and for the contrast paints I have Skeleton Horde Gore Grunt of Fur Creed Camo Wildwood, Militarum Green, Plague Bear Flesh, Snake Bite Leather, Gilliman Flesh for the contrast paints, and then just the regular paints. I've got Castellan Green, Lead Belcher, and then Non Oil and Agrax Earth Shade for the shades at the end. Um, so I'll paint both of them up, and I'll when I get to the colors, I'll show you what they look like on both of them. Uh, so for the first colour I'll be using it'll be Skeleton Horde uh, and this will go over their jacket, um, backpack, webbing uh, and the gaiters uh, for their boots. So it'll just be a nice layer on there. Um, if you want to do their jackets, like I said, with the green or brown or anything like that, I would probably use Militar Green or Wildwood, which is what I'm going to use for their pants. Uh, but I really like the look of the, the sandy coloured uh, jackets. Um, if I could be bothered to apply decals to their arms, I would probably apply... Ranger decals. <laughs> also, if I could find enough of them to apply without having to buy you know, the Ranger box set from Warlord Games. Um, so that's all over his jacket and just his gaiters here. Uh, it doesn't matter too much if you get the skeleton horde on his boots, uh, but if you want to speed up painting a little bit, just try and avoid getting it onto his pants. Uh, so that's all the skeleton horde done on both of them. Uh, as you can see it's all over their uniforms and their gaiters. Uh, the next colour I'll be going on to will be Gorgrunt of Fur. And for that I will put, be putting that onto their boots, uh, straps for their weapons, and straps for their helmets. Um, you'll have some of them where it's across the top here. Uh, you might get some where it's hanging down, and you might get some where they don't really have it at all. Um, but yeah, so it'll be cool going to fur. Um, as you can see, if you spill any skeleton horde onto their boots, doesn't really matter because it's quite a strong colour, the Gorgrunt of Fur, and it'll just cover right over it. Uh, but you just got to be careful when putting it on that you don't get it onto the gaiters.
the only other place I would also put this color is if you have any units or you have any of the models where they have the bayonet on their backpack um, I put it onto just the handle for the bayonet and in this particular one I have also put it inside his helmet I'll finish these two off and we'll come back on to the next colour. Uh, the next colour I'll be going on to will be Creed Camo and that'll just be for the helmet with the uh, camo netting. And this will just basically go all over the top. As always, you got to watch out for the helmets where they got the straps on the back as well. And that'll just go all over the helmet like that. And that's just for the ones with the camera netting on their helmet. Uh, the next colour I'll be going on to will be Wild Wood. Uh, and with this colour I'll be putting it on any entrenching tool handles. Um, but I'll also be putting it onto the trousers of this particular soldier. As always, just be careful. be just straight onto the trousers. Make sure it's not too thick of a layer. Don't want it to be too dark and hide all the detail. Just let it settle nicely into the recesses. That's the wild wood finished. Uh, the next colour I'll be using will be Militarum Green, and this will be for the pants of this guy. I like to use the two different colours just to bring some variation into the unit and just break it up a little bit. Don't mind a bit of monotony, but um. If I can, I'll try and break up the uniforms, make them stand out a bit more, make them a bit ragtag. Provides a sense that they've been in the field and you've got some with newer equipment and gear coming in and others who have been in the field a bit longer. Haven't had access to anything in a while. just the same as the wildwood 
just be careful around the gaiters and the jacket. If you make any mistakes, you can always tidy up with Corex White and reapply a skeleton horn. And that's the uh, military grain done. Uh, the next colour I will be using will be Plague Bearer Flesh and this will go over all their webbing so all their ammo pouches and the straps um, and also over the backpack and that'll just give it that uh, nice faded green sort of khaki look to it which I quite like the look of. Uh, if you do your jackets different colours, say you do them green or brown um, it's up to you but um, you may or may not want to do this step and just leave them the uh, just the yellow color to begin with uh, the next color I'll move on to will be snake bite leather and this will just be for the wood on their weapons. At this stage, I've done just a little bit of clean up with the Corax White on the weapons. If I've managed to get any of the colors, any of the other colors onto the weapon. And then once I finish this step, I'll go back through with the Corax White again, because um, I'll generally always get it onto the skin of the hands and things. And um, I'll just fix that up with the Corax White, and then it'll just be moving on to the painting the skin. And I'll do that for both of them. Uh, I finished doing the cleanup with Corax White um, and fixed up any of the areas where I've gone too far with the other colours. Uh, now I'm going to move on to Gilliman Flesh, which is, funnily enough, going to go onto their flesh. Let's just go straight on. And for this, I'll just do one layer, uh, but you can do more layers, you can just let it dry and put another layer on just to make it darker. But uh, for these particular ones, just at least in my opinion, just one layer will do fine. So that'll just go onto their hands, just onto their face. I'll finish the other one off and then that's basically it for all the contrast paints and then we'll move on to the last couple of steps. Now the next paint we're going to use is Castellan Green. Uh, it's just a regular base paint. Um, I tried to do some test models using contrast paints for just the regular steel helmets uh, but I could just never get one that looked good um, so yeah it's just just a regular paint for just the steel helmets uh, do the top and just underneath with the brim as there well 
Uh, if you have any with the camo netting, um, I'll generally do underneath with the castellan green as well. So I'll do these and then we'll go on to the next paint. Uh, with the castellan green finish, the next paint I'll move on to will be lead belcher. Um, and this will be for any metallic areas on the weapons. And uh, for the belt buckles. Just at the front. Just be careful. Try not to get it anywhere you've already previously painted. Nice thin brush will help do this. And for the SMGs, I will paint them like that. So just metal all over the main body of the weapon. And then after that's finished, we'll um, come back for the final steps. Um, the next paint we're going to move on to is Nuln Oil. Uh, this is shade for all the metallic areas. Uh, I should also mention when doing the lead belcher, um, don't forget to paint in any of the main blades for the entrenching tools. Uh, also be careful, some of them have a handle that goes up to like sort of here, and then others have a handle that go all the way up. So just watch out for those. Uh, also if you have any with uh, the canteens, you've put the canteens on. Um, I'll do lead belcher for the for the lids. Uh, now just non oil, and this will just go over all the metal areas. That'll be any of them if they have the entrenching tools and just the metal areas on just the weapons. If you've decided them, to, if you've decided to paint them up this way, and also any of them, if they have cigarettes, I just paint that Corax white and just leave it like that. I'll finish these ones off, let the null oil dry, and then we'll go on to the, the final step. Um, with the null oil dry, I'm going to move on to the final step now, which will be to get Agrax Earthshade and basically cover the whole model. Um, try to avoid the main metallic areas on the rifle or the SMGs or the BARs if you have them. Um, so yeah, that'll be basically it. It's just getting null no, uh, yep, yeah, Agrax Earthshade. And, um, yeah, just cover the whole model. Try and make sure it doesn't pull too much in any areas. Uh, so I'll just drag it around, spread it around. And, uh, I like to do my models this way. Gives them a nice, dirty, worn appearance. Makes them out like they've been out in the field fighting it's basically just as simple as covering the whole model I'll do that on the other one and then once they're both dry we'll take a look at the how it looks at the end. Now the Agrax Earthshade is basically all dry now and um, this is what the finished result is. Um, I won't do any edge highlighting or 
highlighting of any kind. Um, that's just how I do them. And yeah, I really like the the look. It's a nice uh, worn feel to them. Makes them look like they've truly been in battle. Um, I'm not going to do their bases, um, but obviously with you paint them the same way and then you do your bases up however you want, and that's how they'll look. Um, so yeah, uh, basically I can attribute this uh, painting tutorial to Sonic Sledgehammer Studios. Um, he did a tutorial that I basically followed for this colour scheme. Um, and it really sort of just inspired me to do my own models and um, yeah, start painting all my armies up and get into it. Uh, so thanks to him and thanks to everyone watching and hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully you learnt something and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.